All right, so in this video, I'm going to give an overview of this nausea score script over here. This is one of the most important scripts in this project, which you would most likely be working with, especially if you would like to change anything in your output files for this project. Um, so the first thing that you see over here is that I've commented out all this GLIA behavior code. This GLIA behavior code is essentially um, just the eye tracking, heart rate, cognitive load data from the HP Omnicept headset. So if you do have that headset and if you do want to get that data, you can uncomment this out as well as a few other sections that I will show you throughout the code. If not, if you're using with any other headset, you can just leave this as is. Um, the important thing over here, this is a control mode, it's, sent to, it's set up to passive by default. Um, we have some body sway conditions set up over here, none, movement, eyes open and closed, pre and post, which is that if you would like to go over body sway measurements, if you have um, a connect, a Wii board, anything that you would like to go through that 60 seconds, in our case, we've set up 60 seconds of eyes closed and eyes open pre and post um, conditions. This is where we've set them up, set them up um, the default values, and I'll show you a bit later on how that's used and how you can also use it in your uh, project with the shortcuts for them. Moving down from our, all these variables that we've defined, um, over here, um, this is just setting the basic information for each of the files. So again, this all comes from the values that you set in the inspector. So for example, in our previous video, we showed how if we set the environment size or anything over here, it'll all be outputted to your data file. Um, over here, we're just blogging the headset name. So if you are connected to a headset, it can get that information from Steam VR. If you're connected through Steam VR, and it can by default just write that into your output file. If not, if you're just running it uh, natively on Unity, it will give you no headset. Um, this is where the fixed update is called upon. This is where all um, sort of the uh, setting, the motion sickness production techniques or anything that needs updating, it's happening over here. Um, this basically, as you can see, it's very simple. If any of these conditions for any of the sickness reduction techniques is turned on, it's either doing some basic calculations or it's going through a more complex method to do those calculations to set that reduction technique. Um, again, all of this is just some calculations. All of these, again, this is setting the field of view reduction technique, so on. Um, None of this, I think, really is of importance until I scroll down. And this is the part that I want to kind of focus on. Um, so this is the part where we do set that body sway condition. It does a 60 second countdown on its own, um, where it would basically what would happen um, is that in your output file, for 60 seconds, you will have a condition of body sway pre or uh, post set up. So just to make that more clear, again, if we open our output file, um, over here we have a column called body sway condition. And if you do go through those measurements, for example, when you start moving, when the participant starts moving in the environment, this body sway condition will change to movement. Or if you change it to body sway condition post or pre, eyes open or closed, it will change to that. So that's manually, that's up to you. And how you can change that is based on some shortcuts. So if you press one on your keyboard, before the participant starts the movement, the body sway condition will be set to body sway eyes closed pre. If you press two, it will be set to body sway eyes open pre. This is before you start the movement and after the participant has gone through the movement and afterwards once they've stopped based on either the threshold or if you decide to stop the movement yourself, again, by pressing one or two, one being for body sway eyes closed and two being for body sway eyes open, it can add those to the output file. So basically you as the experimenter uh, determine when to start this condition so you manually do this and let the people know that they should close their eyes then. Yes, their eyes, right? yes, this part has to be done manually, both mm -hmm. from the researcher and the researcher also has to let the participant know that I'm starting the body sway condition, like eyes closed, for example, so just close your eyes, or I'm starting the eyes open, so if you could just look forward for 60 seconds and they will let the participant know. 
yes. when to do that. So, so this basically part. you tell them first, and once they are ready, you press that button. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Um, again, all of this has to do with coding for that section. Um, there are a few shortcuts that I do want to point out over here. Um, so if you press B, this will um, manually stop the body sway condition um, measurement. If in any case that happens, you wouldn't need to do that, but I just have this over here. If in any case you would like to stop, uh, for example, if um, you're doing the body sway um, a measurement post trial and the participant is feeling too sick and you just want to stop it, you can press B and it will stop uh, that condition. If you press escape, uh, this will um, quit the application. Uh, if you press C, this will calibrate the position of the participant once the, um, uh, once the trial starts. And then another final shortcut that could come of handy is pressing the F button. That can also set the vignette, meaning the field of view reduction technique, the static one. Um, everything else should be set in the inspector. Um, moving down over here, um, this is where uh, we're creating uh, and logging the data in those folders, uh, in those files. So the first one that we have over here is the trial. Um, so this will be um, this one that we have over here, the ones that have the participant ID underlined the trial number. So this is the type of information that we will have as outputs. So these are the columns and then down here we have those um, corresponding for each column you have the corresponding where it's getting that data from and it's logging it over there uh, for example i've removed age and gender you can decide to add that by just adding one extra column over here and then uncommenting that or any other information that you feel that you would like to add to this file um, from your inspector um, scrolling down over here um, again this is, has to do with any of the um, reduction techniques. So this, again, is only changing what data is being outputted over here, and I'm just manually adding those based on which condition it's set. And these are all the variables that I set um, up there uh, at the beginning of the code. Then we have the sensory data, which is the most comprehensive data file that you would need. As you can see, there is so much that is covered over here. Um, again, um, going back to if you're using um, the HP Omnicept, um, or any other headset that you feel like you can get extra information from. Uh, this is just a sample of the different um, uh, variables that I could get from that headset, and I've added them over here. For now, I've commented them out because I don't need them. The most basic things that you would need is, uh, again, all those uh, basic participant information, hardware information, motion sickness reduction technique. Um, you can have the distance meter traveled, the time since the beginning, the seconds traveled. Um, all the positions and coordinates, you can get all of that by default in the file. And obviously you can ta uh, add more information on top of that. And again, these are just the columns. And if you scroll down a bit for each of these sections, um, this is where the data is being outputted. Um, and all these things that I uh, just skipped over here that are commented out, again, these are all for um, like, for example, the cognitive load information from the headset, the gyroscope information, all this information that you might want to add uh, on top of that. Um, so that is this function. Um, and then if you scroll down, um, the next thing is the summary data file. Again, this is the same format, so it's the same template that we're following. Over here, we have the columns, scroll down, and the else function you have where it's being outputted. So just to give you a broad overview, each of these functions, you have the summary over here. Um, you have, of course, skipping these two in between, the summary data over here, the sensory data. Each of these are doing um, the outputting. Uh, you can open them up, you can change them, again, based on your needs. Um, and then finally, these are just some changes in the angular rotation, um, and then this function over here, again, these I'm not going to review them line by line because you wouldn't need to change them, uh, but essentially you can understand them by the name of the method. So this is just changing the score based on the input that it gets from the controller by steps of 5%. It's changing them up and down and it's giving it as a percentage um, on the interface for the user to see. 
Um, and then this is just when the game starts, what happens, it sets the body state condition to movement, it's, uh, uh, sets, it starts creating the snow, it creates all, all these basic preliminary stuff which you don't need to worry about. Um, and then that is it. That is an overview of the main things that you would need from this script. So essentially this script, just again an overall what it does is that it has all the main variables that you as a researcher would need to set anything in your trial. This is where all the inspector elements that I showed you in the previous video can be set over here. This is also where the initial trial, if you want to start the trial, quitting the trial, all, all the basic uh, requirements and setups happen over here. And then finally, most importantly, the file outputs. Anything that you need to change, even if you want to add an additional file to your project, this is where you would do it. Yeah, so if you would have additional physiological sensors from a different HMD, that's where you would do this. If you change anything, if you need additional data, if you want to change the measures and so on, you could all do this in this data file. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thanks, Rose.